Yeah, cut the TV off, cause this is the real world. Ride with us, ride with us. Brian Anthony. So we've laid it out. We've laid it out. The traps that were set for us, that we were born into, that we were brought us brought into this world. Um, the layers to the onion, the things that we were thought, you know, like the Twilight Zone, being brought into it, the Matrix. But we can win. We can break it. Most of this stuff has already been codified. You have to have something codified because, which means just put into code. So everything has its own code. Each computer system, code of the streets, you know, code of law enforcement. And there's code in the word of God. And so when we were born into Already was New World Order structure, market of beats system structure. And they had, we were born into it. We allowed them to impose it upon us, impress it upon us. Well, the way to come out is to come out. And that's just not in word only, it's in deed also. Everything we do, we have to be conscious of it. It's like they've band together and made a pact to bring in the New World Order and enforce it and do population reduction. We have to do the same, except our pact has to be with our God to stand upon his word and do things the way he told us to do it. So with that said, I mean, if we had done that from the beginning, we wouldn't have ever gotten this far in the mouth, in the belly of the beast. So let's bring back some, let's do some, uh, talk about what we can do to reverse the process. And it's gonna be painful however it goes. Um, but anything worth having is worth fighting for. So, One thing the enemy is, is, is really good at, destroying the family. Remaking the image of the family in something that was not the original intent. So we're making the image and the image. We're, we're cre recreating the image of the family and the image of the beast. Where they say that there is no gender or you can have two male or two female and uh, you can, you know, opt to change the anatomy or the sex of the child when they're born, before they're born, things like this. It's not how things were intended to be. So unfortunately, the LGBTQP and all the rest of the alphabet that plan does not fit with the original plan. The plan of feminism does not fit with the original plan. The original plan was designed for mankind, male and female, created he them. And everyone had a role to play. I would say in the beginning, Man and, 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 and male and female were created equal to be partners, to be the female was created to be the help meet. But something transpired in Eden 
there was trouble in the garden. Satan entered in and made a deal with the woman. And she was cursed for it. Okay, guys. So what we need is we need to change our, change our mind. Um, a lot of the things we were taught, we have to go against the grain. That's it. I mean, it's just so we, 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 we already saw from the first series of, that I started with this that it's good against evil is what it all boils down to. So each one has a plan. Uh, the evil is to, is to trick you into it one step at a time. The good is it was laid out from the beginning. So we all have choices to make. So uh, here's the deal. With the rebuilding of the family structure. This is in direct opposition to the New World Order agenda. And it's lining up with the righteous side, the righteous seed. That's why the New World Order uh, depopulation agenda, population control, is very important to them. Because that's the other side. You see what I'm saying? It's the other side. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to a time in history, a time in life, a time in Bible prophecy, the restoration of things is coming. I have a prophecy here in Isaiah chapter four, which I don't think has ever been fulfilled. But we're at a time now to where it's going gonna, it's gonna to come to pass. It may sound strange for a lot of people who are still caught up in churchianity. You have to store a little, study a little Torah. Second Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved. So let's read what it says in, in Isaiah chapter 4. So we see that the first deal was made between Satan and Eve. And it's like Adam consented because he was henpecked. He didn't say anything. He didn't step in and do his job. And so those are the two opposing sides now. It's like feminism and LGBTQ elementopism on one side and the ways of Yah on the other side. So he knew this day was coming and he knew that there would be, he knew that it would be like it is now. A lot of single women, whether they're widows or had children out of wedlock or whatever happened just being brought up in this society and it poisoned the whole society they said it started with the men but no it started with the women and you can tell because the chastisement here is towards the women and the aim is on cleaning up the women so you can't keep making those deals that you made in the garden, making those same choices. So let's read it. Isaiah 4, 1. And it says, And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. See, Scripture talks about how one more is made for the man, a man for the woman. A man not getting married is not a reproach. A woman not getting married is. A man not having kids is not a reproach. A woman not having kids is. This is what you were created for. That's what you were created for. 
So verse two, in that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious and the fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely for them that are escaped of Israel. You got to think about Luke 21, where to my pray that you're able to escape these things and stand before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. So it says those that are left should be called holy, not hold those who were taken away. Y'all need to think about it. Y'all need to think about it. Okay. Verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth. Now the Hebrew word there is not filth. The Hebrew word used there is a word that means excrement. Washed away the excrement, the the bowel movement, right? Of the daughters of Zion, and shall purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. So the people that are left there withstood the judgment and the burning. They stood the test of time. They went through the fire. And they called holy because they were able to stand it. Start right there again. Isaiah 4, 4. When the Lord shall have washed away. Now let's start at 4, 3. And it shall come to pass. But he that is left in Zion and he that remaineth in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even everyone that is written among the living in Jerusalem. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth, the excrement of the daughters of Zion and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place a Mount Zion and upon her assemblies a cloud and a smoke by day and a shining and a flame of fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense and there shall be a tabernacle for a shadow in the daytime from the heat and for a place of refuge and for a cover from the storm and from the rain. You know, in Revelation chapter 6, when all them people get up there, it said, and no heat going to burn on them no more. Maybe them ones that couldn't stand the fire. Because it said everybody left in Jerusalem was going to be called holy. So, let's go to Scripture. You know, I got to take you to Scripture. That's, that's where the, actually the plan came from. Everything's based on good and evil. So, um, I'll go like this. Okay. So, this is to the women. To the women out there that are um, sexually active, having sex. Uh, it's only two ways it could be. Either you're married or you're whoring. And that's basically it. Um, sex equals marriage. So you can't have sex with multiple guys because you can't be married to multiple guys. It requires a woman to submit. So if you're not married and you're sexually active, you're whoring. And I'll show you in a second. And so uh, we know that God hates divorce. Malachi 2.16. We may go there in a second as well. Um... So let's first take a look and see how marriage is in the eyes of the Lord, in the eyes of Yahweh. 
Um, so let's go to Deuteronomy. Uh, chapter 21, and we're going to start right here at verse 11. We're going to look at the circumstances, but that's really not important. What's important is, what's important is, um, the, uh, how it's categorized and the instructions. So we'll go ahead and start at Deuteronomy chapter 21. Verse 11. And it says, And seest among the captives a beautiful woman, and hast a desire unto her, that thou wouldest have her to thy wife. Then thou shalt bring her home to thine house, and she shall shave her head, and pare her nails. Okay, this is in case, you know, uh, like I said, a, a captive. But uh, listen to the wedding ceremony. It's, the wedding ceremony is not there's no license. Okay. So this is going to tell you what constitutes being a wife in this situation. Verse 13. And she shall put the raiment of her captivity from off her. And shall remain in thine house. And bewail her father and her mother a full month. And after that thou shalt go in unto her. And be her husband, and she shall be thy wife. When the marriage is consummated, your husband and wife. Okay, let's keep reading. And it shall be, if thou have no delight in her, then thou shalt let her go whither she will. But thou shalt not sell her at all for money. See, pimps and prostitutes, you know, that's your wife, you can't be selling her. Thou shalt not make merchandise of her, because thou hast humbled her. Humbled her, you see what I'm saying? That's the word. That's the word used for knowing her. Um, humbled her consummating the relationship so that changes things sex equals marriage if a man have two wives this is um, Deuteronomy 21 verse 15 if a man have two wives one beloved and another hated and they have borne him children both the beloved and the hated if the firstborn be hers that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath, for he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Okay, so the beginning of a man's strength is his firstborn son. And it's saying that, see, this is the law. The law came after Abraham. It was the law of faith before this. But, um, so, what this is saying is two things. You see, he had a wife that was hated. Probably because she um, wasn't obedient or whatever the, the issue was. Something wasn't going right with her. He didn't put her away because the Lord hates divorce. Um, also, uh, we'll, we'll go there actually right now. So, Malachi. Chapter 2, verse 16, and it says, For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violent with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore, take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. In other words, putting away is divorce. 
It tells you not to deal treacherously like that with the wife of his youth. Matter of fact, let's back up. Let's back up. I'm going to start at verse 14. Yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant? And did not he make one, yet had the residue of the spirit? And wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. And then it goes into 16. For the Lord, the God of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away. For one covereth violence with his garment, saith the Lord of hosts. Therefore take heed to your spirit that ye deal not treacherously. So it ain't no, you can't mistreat these women. But all the women need a covering. So we got to revert back to the original plan. We were born into this, so that's our excuse right now. But when we know better, we have to do better. So a woman is under the care of her dad when she's born. Under the covering of her, that's the man figure, the dad. Or the, or the, you know, it should be the dad. Whatever circumstances it may not be, whatever the male figure is, some women don't even have a male figure, so just think of where they're going to be starting from, trying to learn a man, trying to get to know the system. The men, um, we, we, we can't abuse these women, but all women need a covering. Uh, I was saying earlier, you know, even the ones who've messed up may have had children out of wedlock, may have been in previous relationships and everything. But when they come into the truth of the knowledge and God is cleaning them up, washing the excrement away from the daughters of Zion. Then uh, they have to accept the rules and you have to treat them right. You have to accept the past mistakes. You can't hold that over their head. Because everyone was born in, into this darkness, into this blindness. And we're coming out now. That's what this is all about. All right. <laughs> so here's where it's going to get hot and steamy. So, I mean, it's a lot of, um, let's say this. A lot of women that have been overlooked for certain reasons and, and and likewise there are a lot of men as well who've been overlooked this is about to change um, one of the dreams I had a while back was about the big war about how they was drafting everybody I believe it was men and women and they just kept sending them kept sending them kept sending them well you know we just went over Isaiah 4 chapter 4 um Men are going to be slim pickings, plus the, the, the poisoning that they've done to us, things they've done to poison us. But um, the rebuilding of the family unit is mas importante. So the firstborn son is the beginning of a man's strength. So what do we look for? The attributes in a woman. This is for the men, basically, um, because it's a breeding process selection process they say um it's woman's choice but the, yeah but there's things you can do to make that a lot easier choice for them as well and and this is what you should be looking for instead of the woman that's all caked up with makeup you know all body breast showing and you know everything all hanging out that's not that has nothing to do with you need to be thinking about your seed man you need to be thinking about that womb, that, that ground. Is it fertile? You know, that, is it, what kind of seed is it going to give you? What kind of return on your investment is it, is it going to give you? You know what I'm saying? Can she even have kids? You, you know? So we're going to touch on that in just a second. But So in essence, when you get down to it, the stuff that they show us on television uh, in Hollywood, it doesn't matter. Like, Looks of a woman doesn't matter uh, because if you're going to have a firstborn son, your strength, the looks of a man doesn't matter. The firstborn son, uh, 
the, the, the looks of a woman is for the man's pleasure only, for my eyes only, for my pleasure only. It has nothing to do with the long-term goal, the long-term process. Um, so the things you, you really want in a woman that you could pass on to your seed, to your offspring, strong, physically, and mentally. You, these are the things that you could pass on to your son. You don't want to be, you know what I'm saying, oh, your son is a pretty, pretty boy, you know. If, if it is, it is, but if it's not, it doesn't matter. That's not how a man is judged at the end of the day. And um, you want a woman to be obedient because this, this is the example you definitely want to have um, in the home, in the structure, the son seeing, which would help make him more strong. And uh, you want her to be humble, smart, healthy. That's a big one. You don't want a woman who's sickly, you know, who, who every other week she's sick, and she's out of shape, just whatever. You want her immune system to be strong, even if she's overweight. As long as she's healthy, that's something you can pass on, you know, to your child. Clean. Cleanliness is a big thing. Uh, God-fearing, definitely. Uh, you don't want to be, you know, involved with any strange women. That's what, that's what the scripture calls it. Um, honest. Honesty is a big one. Witty. It's able to think, able to talk, and come up with something quick, you know. Loyal and faithful. And then uh, age is important. Childbearing age. You know, back in the day, I think I, one of my grandmothers, I believe, got married at 16 or something like that. So I guess between 16 and 40. I mean, some states it's not legal to the 18 without parental consent. We'll see a lot of this stuff start to change if this war gets like I think it's going to get. Let me talk back. Let me let me speak back on the woman right quick. Because uh, a, a blogger said something. She said something like, I am single because I want to bring more to the table than my vagina. But let me address that because that that depends. That's going to depend on what that husband, what that man. But I understand that she's not in the faith like that. But I'm, the reason I'm addressing that is because there may be other women that feel like that. That's going to be up to that man. It's, it's really not up to you because um, you're, su you're to submit unto the husband as, um, as unto the Lord. He's basically a God over you. Your, your desire should be to thy husband and he shall rule over you. So if he's in a position to where you don't need a, a doctor degree, doctorate degree. You don't need uh, 20 years experience on the job or, uh, you know, you don't need to uh, be making six figure income or seven figure income. You know, that's that's up to that man. You know, if he's choosing you and you're choosing him, you know, so yeah, I'll work out the details on what he sees in you or what you see in him. Or, you know what I'm saying? What your role, what, what's expected of you and what what's his expectations, what you expect. Of him, yeah, but apparently that's that that can't be. You can't let that be a reason, you, you know, because you're a single mother and um, you ain't balling yet. Now, on the other hand, for a man, I could see how that could be an esteem issue or something like that. But for a woman, no, because you are a woman. In, in, in proper place, it's going to be an asset, you know, it's going to be an asset. But if not in order, it could be a definitely a liability. So, it's, I mean, it's really let that man decide on what he needs at that time for his household. And if you're willing, you know, don't, don't, um, you don't have to shy away because you don't feel that you're in the right spot yet. 
Because he, apparently he's going to take you out of that spot anyway. And it's supposed to be for life. So whatever reasons you're choosing, you know, make sure you're choosing right. You know, that's what I would like to say. Everyone. Because it's supposed to be for life. This old easy divorce thing. You know, we showed you how um, a lot of that other stuff, Israel wouldn't grant a divorce. It would grant an execution, stoning, you know, all that infidelity type stuff. Nah. Anyway, let's get back to it. The welfare state was an experiment, a project, and it was to, in essence, remove the man from the home and let the state, the government, be the man. So the, the family is all weakened up now. So they're going to be blended families. You know, chances are... You know, one of the things that uh, as a study I've been looking at, uh, when you remove the man from the home, it makes the children start experimenting, doing other things earlier, like sex, drugs, alcohol, and other things, just doing it at a younger age. So chances are, I mean, almost everybody comes from a one-parent household or a broken situation, uh, blended family. So you have to learn to accept that. Uh, we'll get to Abraham probably next on how um, how he had 318 people in his own house before he had a son. So, um, so yeah, the men and women are going to have to accept the, the, the kids of previous relationships with whoever you're bringing into the family as your own. That's, that's just got to be it. But but then divorce can't be just as freely out there easy e either, you know. This thing is for life. Um, also, family planning helps it, it helps you in maintaining wealth for the long term. The long term picture is not like every generation got to start from zero and try to see how many millions you can get before it goes back to the state and start all over again. No, this is for generational wealth. And we need faith, holiness, and Yah, God. We need mental capacity. See, everybody needs to know how to read and write. Everybody needs to be taught, educated, schooled with the right information. Um, physical fitness, we need that. That's important, for, for especially for, well, for, for the men and the women and the children. Physical fitness. It's a saying, health is your wealth. So, breeding, breeding, this is important. Um, they, well, during the slavery days, they did do some breeding on plantations, and you see the mistake they made. They made superhumans. <laughs> so, but we need to do this with ourselves. Um, and these are the things that, that we're looking at. Um, size, strength, overall health, fitness, mental capacity. Uh, these are things you want to pass on to your children to give them a fighting chance. Because this is a, this is this is a, it's not something you just knock out in one generation. The new world order. It's going to be around till Jesus comes, till Yahshua Hamashiach comes. We're going to be fighting this thing. Now it's argued it's argued between the occult and, and the church and sinners and saints and all type of people. Did Satan lie about if you eat this forbidden fruit, you know? He said, God know that you would be like gods. And they said that's the lie that he's been telling ever since. Well, no, it's not a lie. It even says it in Psalms. Jesus even said it. Let's look at this. Let's go over this. Because the Bible does say he gave all those who believe power to become the sons of God. And initially, it were just the angels. 
That's why we were made in his image. That's why in the Psalms it tells us that we're a little lower than the Elohim. See, the Bible says it's, 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 in English they put angels there. But it says we're a little lower than the Elohim. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's go to Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. For God doth know that in that day, so this is Satan, when he's um, coaxing, coercing the woman to partake of the forbidden fruit. And then we find out in the New Testament that her husband was with her. Adam was right there, but he allowed this conversation to go on. See, with his covering, he shouldn't have allowed that. He should have been the one dealing with Satan. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of things we've learned since then. And so we see that in feminism and in, in the world system, they say androgynous is good. That's where... A female is more like a male, it acts more like a boy. They said that's good. And for a boy to act more like a woman, a female, they said that's good. They say that there's a such thing as toxic masculinity, which means being a male, having testosterone, um, is bad. It's toxic. You see? You see how they twist things? No. The man is supposed to provide and protect, and there's conjugal rights. See, we've let man take away what God has created, and we have to get back to our system. So let's go ahead and uh, Genesis. So let's say I'm, I'm going to start a little before that so you can get the gist of it, but we're going to read down to Genesis Three, five. I'm going to start it. Go ahead and start at Genesis 3, 1. Just a few more verses. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay. Now, here's what the serpent says um, in rebuttal to that. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know that in the day that thou eat, that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil. So some say that Satan lied to the woman. He didn't lie to her. I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Turn to the book of Psalms. The reason why I'm going through this is we have to first know ourselves. We have to know who we are. We have to know what we are. And we have to know our positions in order to rightly return to the positions that we're supposed to hold. Psalm 82 and 6. Psalm 82 and 6. And it says, I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Hmm. God was telling him, ye are gods, and all of your children are the most high. You still don't think that's right? Let's turn to the book of John in the New Testament. Turn to the book of John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And this is going to be John 10, 34. I'm actually going to start at verse 30. I'm going to start at verse 30 and read down so you can kind of get a gist of this is Jesus talking to some guys, I guess, who wanted to argue with them. <laughs> so that's uh, John 10, 30. And it says, 
I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed, showed you from my father. For which of these works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou being a man makest thyself God. Thou being a man makest thyself God. 34. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are God's? That settles it. So no, Satan didn't lie to Eve. And, that, that, and that's why God said we are made in his image. We are God's. That's why he's the father God. He can't be our father and have a son that's not of him. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, that's evolution. You know, evolution is the only one where, you know, you have a monkey and then the monkey give birth to a pig. You see what I'm saying? If God is our father, then we are gods. Yeah. Yeah, we just have to go through this earthly experience, this fleshly life experience. So we see, now that we see that, that we're made in the image of God, we understand that. That we're made in his image. Ye are gods. I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. All right? Okay. We're going to the book of John. Chapter 14. And we're going to start at verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the father may be glorified in the son if ye ask anything in my name I will do it if ye love me keep my commandments but the point I want to make was it says if ye love me keep my commandments if you love me, keep my commandments. So, in the scripture, when God said, uh, to tell the woman that your desire should be to your husband and he shall rule over you. This is basically how you're going to show your husband that you love him keep his commandments so let's go back to Genesis now let's go back to Genesis 3 since we know that we know that the devil is a liar but in this case he didn't lie to Eve he said don't eat it and she ate it we don't know the real reason but what Satan told her was not a lie. And before Satan told her that, we were already gods. What he told her was we was going to know good and evil, and we did. Which was probably not for us to know, because now we can be judged for good and evil. See, at first he was not, we weren't going to be judged for, because we wouldn't have had the knowledge of sin. Now, since you have the knowledge of sin, now you're accountable and responsible for it. So we're back in Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. And we're going to see what happened when, when, when the, the curse God put on him. And we're going to see how when God set up the structure. 
because he wanted us to be equal. He wanted man and woman to be one. But then he had to um, set up a hierarchy. So let's find that Genesis 3. Let's go back to 3, 5 with what Satan told him. For God does know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. He was there the whole time. He let the woman do the business. You see, he let her do all the talking to this other, this this serpent, this Satan. Nah, bruh. Nah. Just anybody just can't talk to you, woman like that, especially while you there. You feel me? These are some things we learn. Okay. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons, and they heard the voice of the Lord, and it should say, Yah, yud hey wav hey, uh, Yahuwah. They heard the voice of Yahuwah, Elohim, walking in the garden of the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. And you see that now also. You see it said Adam and his wife. And you know there was no wedding. There was no wedding, right? I'm saying that for a reason. We won't get there. You know that Adam was there first. And then God made Eve and brought her to him. Presented her to him. There was no wedding. But we can assume that it was consummated, right? We'll get to that later. Okay. Oh, the Lord God amongst the trees in the garden. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Wait a minute. How you know you was naked? You wasn't supposed to know that you were naked. See, you see what I'm saying? Man is, is so smart and stupid. Check it out. Verse 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldst not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to, to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. See, you know the code of the street, no snitching. He would have been... He didn't even ask him about her. He asked about you, and you just point the finger and sing the Star Spangled Banner. Everything has to be codified. Adam did the wrong thing here. You the man. Stand up. Take responsibility. No, he snitch on the woman. Okay. And I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me. I mean, the serpent tricked me. And I did eat. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. The serpent is cursed. See, so you still have people, some of the people worship the serpent, and some of the people say the serpent is cursed. That's how you know. That's how you know which side you're on right there, what you do with the serpent. You know what I mean? Okay. All the days of thy life, and I will put enmity, enmity so that make you enemies, between thee and the woman. So man, mankind. And the serpent should be enemies. So if you're worshiping the serpent, you want the wrong side. You see? 
and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. See, thy seed, the woman's seed is man, mankind, but it end up being Yahshua, Hamashiach, the son of God. And the serpent seed is going to end up being the Antichrist. Clash of the Titans. See, Genesis was priming us, getting us ready for this, for, for this day. Right here we are now. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. You hear that? So to the woman, your desire shall be to your husband. Your desire shall be to your husband and he shall rule over you. You're no longer equals. Woman is not above the man. Woman is not equal to the man. Since this happened, how it happened, God made some changes. You still help me. But now your desire should be to your husband. And he should rule over you. What does that mean? I mean, what you want, you got to go through him. If he say okay, it's okay. If he say no, that's that. You see how feminism tries to flip that on his head? And LGBTQ and LMNOP try to flip that on his head. Planned Parenthood try to flip that on his head. So we've identified the problems and the trappings. Now it's time to get it right. Now it's time to get back right. So right there. Genesis 3.16. You know what John 3.16 says. For God shall love the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But Genesis 3.16 says this. Genesis 3.16 says, Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. First Timothy chapter 2. And um, I really want to focus in on verses 9 through 15, so we'll start at verse 8. 1 Timothy 2 and 8. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. So, you know, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. You know, so um, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 24. Uh, we may back up a little bit, but uh, adultery is not to be because if we're not, this is if, this is not pimping and hoeing. 
You see what I'm saying? This is real life. And we'll talk about some of the benefits of the, of the family structure like this, whether a man chooses to have one wife or two wives or ten wives. Um, it's pooling the resources, really. You see what I'm saying? This, this ain't no pimping and hoeing. This ain't no gigoloing. Nothing like that. This is something holy and to be taken as such. So Deuteronomy 22:21. Then they shall bring out the damsel to the door of her father's house and the men of her city shall stone her with stones that she die because she hath wrought folly in Israel to play the whore in her father's house. So shalt thou put away evil from among you. Uh oh. 23. If a damsel that is a virgin be betrothed unto a husband. Okay, so that's engaged. And a man find her in the city and lie with her. She's raped. Then ye shall bring them both unto the gate of that city. And ye shall stone them with stones that they die. The damsel, because she cried not out. See what I'm saying? So she was raped. She should have been. Somebody should have heard her saying, oh, stop. So she might have been in on it. And if this is the way you behave. You've wrought folly in Israel. So. Okay. And that they died. Damsel cried not out being in the city. And the man because he hath humbled his neighbor's wife. See what I'm saying? He lay with his neighbor's wife. He humbled her. That's, that's, that's a sin or a crime. Punishable by death. So thou shalt put away evil from among you. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lay with her shall die. You see what I'm saying? Because she hollered out. But unto the damsel thou shalt do nothing. There is in the damsel no sin worthy of death. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor to slay him, even so is this matter. For he found her in the field, and the betrothed damsel cried, and there was none to save her. So that is how that thing goes. I'm going to read a little more on this. I'll probably go because it's just a few more verses. But uh, that's how that thing goes. This is serious. You know, God is the one who governed this, put these laws in here for a reason. It's the religion and, and the system that we're under that's removed our right, our liberty. But the quickest way to rebuild a strength in numbers. And we'll probably go there next. Okay, so here we go. Um, Deuteronomy 22 and 28. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they be found, then the man that lay with her shall give unto the damsel, damsel's father fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife. Because he hath humbled her. He may not put her away all his days. A man shall not take his father's wife nor discover his father's skirt. So, you see the diary. You, you laid with the woman. Thought you were stealing something, getting away with something. You got found out. Okay, you got to pay the diary. And then that's your wife now. For life. You can't put her away. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to take care of this woman. The man's responsibility, the man's duty is uh, provide, be a provider, protect, and our conjugal rights. So what we seen earlier there was an example that the man had two wives and he hated one of them. He still had to provide for the one he hated. You see what I'm saying? She's not committing adultery or anything like that. Any reason to uh, put her away? You chose her. She chose you. Y'all, whatever it was, y'all consummated. Y'all became one. You just don't separate like that. Something to think about. Let's go to Titus. This, this is interesting. I hope y'all stay with me throughout this entire thing. Because um, I feel the time is short. People making plans all the way through. You know, well, that's what you're supposed to do. But... Uh, 
Let's see or something. I don't know, man. And I just, I saw a FEMA truck today. I saw a FEMA truck. I could have filmed it, but I didn't want to seem suspicious. It was just one truck, but it looked like some type of work truck. It looked like some type of work truck. Titus 2 verse 1 But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine That the aged men be sober Grave Temperate Sound in faith In charity In patience The aged women likewise That they be in behavior as becometh holiness Not false accusers Not given to much, much wine Not given to much wine teachers of good things that they may teach the young women to be sober to love their husbands to love their children to be discreet to be discreet chast keepers at home good obedient to their own husbands that the word of God be not blasphemed Let's see be obedient to your own husband. Your own husband. You know, a lot of women that go against their husband to go to do what the pastor say or what somebody else say. Be obedient to your own husband. Well, here's why we should do family planning. It's because they do it with us. Did you know that U.S. bonds are based on Social Security numbers? Marriage certificates and birth certificates. Mm -hmm. So when you're born, you get these things. Um, there, for every person born who gets these things, marriage, uh, also marriage license. So these are some of the traps that we mentioned earlier, and these are why. This is why marriage license, birth certificate, social security card or number, and uh. These, the, the, the government, the U.S. government is able to borrow some, somewhere between 200000 and 400000 per person on your information at birth. They're doing family planning for you. They're making money off of you. So we should return to the marriage contract and um, do away with the marriage license and these other things that go along with it because we're born in the system. We're born in the trap, and it's so hard. Once you're in it, it's hard to get out of it. So, um, I mean, how do we sustain ourselves, right? Uh, because, like, like I've said several times before, the, the jobs, the Fortune 500 jobs are their jobs. The banks are their banks. Uh, the hospitals are their hospitals. The churches are their churches. The schools are their schools. We have to come out of her, my people. And let's look at Abraham since he was the father of the faith. Let's look at some of the things that, you know, how, how it worked out for him. Um, because he definitely was not in the system. Um, so let's go to right now. Um, Genesis chapter 13, verse 2. Um, actually, I'm going to start at verse 1 here. Genesis chapter 13. And Abram went up out of Egypt. He and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle, in silver, and in gold. So we know some of the businesses he was in, right? Somehow he's getting rich in cattle, silver, and in gold. So that's why some of the things I named out earlier, like the mining, the farming, and the ranching, herding. Uh huh. Let's read a little more. That's interesting. And he went on his journeys from the south, even to Bethel, unto the place where his tent had been at the beginning between Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. So Lot had, Lot had flocks and herds as well. So these are some of the things that we need to get into that's apparently it's valuable. Okay, so let's go to Genesis 14 now. 
start at Genesis 14, and we'll start at um, start at verse 10. This is where you're going to see the strength of Abraham. Um, you've seen Lot was with him just a while ago, and uh, some people came in and took Lot by force, strong arm, and uh, we'll see what Abraham did. So uh, Genesis 14, starting at verse uh, 10. And the veil of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there. And they that remained fled to the mountain, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. And they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, so Abraham's nephew, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol and brother of Aner. And these were confederate with Abram. So they was cool with Abram. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive to my lot, his nephew, he armed his trained servants born in his own house. He armed his trained servants born in his own house. 318 and pursued them unto Dan. So there was 318 men. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them and pursued them unto Hobah which is on the left hand of Damascus. He, and, I'm saying, and he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods. And the women also and the people and the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Shadialomer and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheva, which is the king's dale. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine, and he was the priest of the Most High God, and blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemy into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Abram gave tithes to Melchizedek. And the king of Sodom said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said unto the king of Sodom, I have lifted up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God, the possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, and that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Ashkel, and Mamre. Let them take their portion. So, you don't want to do business with wicked men because they offer you a lot of money. Because then they can say, I have made them rich. We just read in chapter 13, Abram was already rich. Very rich in cattle and silver and gold. And the king offered him more than that. He just said, here, you can take all this that you got back. Abram said, nah, I'm not going to take nothing from you. I'm not doing business with, with, with you like that, you know. But, you know what I'm saying, just reimburse me for that which I, I spent, in other words. Okay. So we see how Abraham had 318 trained men, trained to fight, armed. born in his own house of his servants he didn't have an heir yet so remember he told God before he had a son God had promised him a son and he waited 25 years to get that son but halfway through like tw uh, 13 years he got Ishmael but before that he was even saying let Eliezer you know born in my house be my heir and God told him no nah, it's not going to be your heir he said your heir is going to come from your own loins so, Abraham did not send them kids off to public school. 
He didn't train them, send them off to somebody else to train the martial arts and everything else. He taught them everything they need to know. Him, he and his entourage, his people, taught those people everything they needed to know about everything. And these weren't slaves because they were slaves. You wouldn't arm them because they'd rebel. They were servants. You know what I mean? So, and that's how we have to do today. We have to take care of the youth, the kids. We have to look out for them. We have to embrace them, teach them what we know. So, it, so every generation is not starting over again, recreating the wheel, starting over from zero. And we have to have organizations that employ people. You see, like when people come out of prison and stuff like that, they can't get a job. They're going to go back to what they're familiar with. But if we had our own things that we can incorporate them into, you know, we don't have to worry about the rec recidivism like that. And um, also, they need to know how to create their own business or job they need to have the skills to do that everyone needs to have that so we see that abraham had 318 men born in his own house he didn't have to teach him how to ride how to um he armed him so he didn't have to, he didn't have to teach him how to get ready they were already ready you see what i'm saying he was teaching them along the way so he got those because this was before he had either of his sons so he got those by either adoption, this was his crew, his family, his gang, his troops, his army, his militia, his clique, his posse, his club, his team. Did I mention family? Yeah, they were in his house. You see what I'm saying? Strength in numbers. We got to go back to the original plan, guys. So, um, some things we need to be doing, uh, because we can't just let them control us like that. Or we've already lost the fight from the cradle to the grave, you know. So, we need to be doing mining, yes, uh, farming, ranching, herding. Uh, we need to be, uh, we need to teach business. Uh, correctly teach history to the to the youth, you know, because the layers of the onion are deep, and they can get lost out there. So I mean, it's up to us to teach it. It's not up to them. It's not up to the schools to teach it. Um, uh, we have to own schools, own our own schools, and. Um, we have to produce our own movies. We have to tell it like it is. We have to tell the truth. We have to do our own music. Um, when music was monetized, that's that's when it got it became a tool of the beast. You know, mu the music industry is the beast now. Um, we need to uh, create and 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 uh, do our own entertainment. Uh, certain figures we have to cut out of it. Certain elements we have to cut out of it. You can't just do it just because it sells. That's selling your soul, in essence. And uh, we have to reinforce positive psychology. So a lot of things we've been told have been lies, and it's been to break us mentally. It's been to break us. And you break you mentally, and then you physically break down as well. So we need to think uh, superiority. We have to be overcomers. So family planning is good, but uh, I don't mean it's the opposite of Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood is to get rid of your kids and things like that. Family planning is to, to plan how you, you're going to multiply. See, Scripture should be like, um, uh, be fruitful and multiply. But then the New World Order thinking is, no, you shouldn't, shouldn't have any kids or have like only one kid. Now they're saying maybe up to two. That's not multiplying. It takes two people. If you have two people and you make one kid, you just divide it. Yeah, if you have two people and you make uh, two kids, okay, you still didn't multiply. You see? You see, you have to at least have three to begin to multiply if there are two people to make a child, you know. 
um, prearranged marriages. These are things that we can bring back. Um, it'll make it easier. Divorce is the enemy. See, they, they have, uh, when the state does the marriage licensing, then it's ready-made divorce. Shoot, not divorce now, $99. You know what I'm saying? That's cheap. So, um, but we need prearranged marriages. The dowry maybe needs to come back because people, when you have skin in the game, people are going to do more to make make it work. Um, so these are some ideas we need need to all look into. I'm going to keep it moving. I can't express all the ideas right now, but I'm just throwing it out there to let you know that these, these are very viable and it will work and it will help us to multiply, just to put it bluntly. See, that just goes to show that, you know, uh, the New World Order way of thinking can't flip it. It doesn't matter. You, we all know about Willie Lynch, right? The Willie Lynch letter tells how to, to, to break, break a, a black man and talks about how you got to put the woman over the man, you know, you got to um, put the man through so much. I mean, you got to bring him down. It's, it's basically a mental breaking and a physical breaking. You should read it. The Willie Lynch letter. And uh, it talks about how you got to put the woman over the man, basically usurp authority over the man. That goes against scripture. See, that's the new way order new world order way of thinking it's um you know the more money a woman makes or uh the more degrees she has it's supposed to put her in charge it's supposed to make her a man you know um no there are still roles okay i could respect all of that i could respect uh you know a woman who knows how to make money that's great and and who um has gotten some degrees, that's great, but you still have to play your role. You're a woman and a mother and a wife. It doesn't make you anything other than that, you know. You have to learn how to separate those two worlds, um, or three worlds. Uh -huh. We're in the book of Ephesians now, chapter five. Um, see then, that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, where is in excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs and singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ by submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Okay, let's say that again. Verse 22. Wives, Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be subject to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the, 
the Lord, the church, for we are the members of his body and the flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they, tw and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. It doesn't say the wife should love her husband. She doesn't know how. Her job is to obey her husband. So there are, contrary to, to, to the New World Order thinking, there are designated roles and you can't flip them. It's like, it's like flipping the sun and the moon. You know, you have this moon coming out in the daytime trying to give the light and the, and the sun coming out at night trying to, you know, give the lesser light. It, it wouldn't work. You can't flip them. It, it'll, it'll drive things crazy, which it, which it has done. So there are roles. Man is to be a provider and a protector of the woman and the children and provide conjugal rights to the wife. The wife is to obey, reverence her husband and uh, submit unto her husband as unto the Lord. First Corinthians. I just want to get the roles understood before we go, before we can fight the plan. We have to understand where we got off track um, in the first place. Because we were born into this, born into this mental deception. So let's go to First Corinthians chapter eleven on uh, verses eight through ten. But uh, let me just go ahead and start at the beginning because I think it's it's all meat for growth. And we need to know this. So it says, Be ye followers of me. And this again is 1 Corinthians um, chapter 11. I'm starting at verse 1. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ as the head of the woman is the man and the head of Christ is God every man praying or prophesy, prophesying having his head covered dishonoreth his head but every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head. See how it's reversed? For that is even all one as if she were shaven. For if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head, because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Um, I wanted to focus in on verses um, 8 through 10. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. 
for this cause of the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. So that's what we what we're saying here. The New World Order has changed that. The New World Order has made a woman, our women, divas, goddesses, to be worshipped. No. And and they, and it's the puffeth up. It's made them more than what they really are. They want to be God or gods or goddesses. But no, you're a woman. And you can't usurp authority over a man like that. God, the Bible says God that is everything in decency and in order. So... So a lot of men weren't taught this. A lot of women weren't taught this. We were born into a system, this system. But John 8, 32 again, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and lo, and horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom thou shalt serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Genesis 15 and I started at um, verse 12 through 16 okay lastly what we're doing is taking it back to the beginning the family structure is what the church is based off of. The government structure is based off of the church. So first came the family, then came the church, and then came the government. I say that to say this. And it's not me saying it. Deuteronomy 17. And the man that will do presumptuously and will not hearken unto the priest that standeth to minister there before the Lord thy God or unto the judge, even that man shall die. And thou shalt put away the evil from Israel. And all the people shall hear and fear and do no more presumptuously. When thou art come unto the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, and shall possess it, and shall dwell therein, and shall st and shall say, I will set a king over me, like as all the nations that are about me. Thou shalt in any wise set him king over thee, whom the Lord thy God shall choose. One from among thy brethren shall thou set king over thee. Thou mayest not set a stranger. Thou mayest not set a stranger over thee, which is not thy brother. But he shall not multiply horses to thyself, nor cause the people to return to Egypt to the end that he should multiply horses for as much as the Lord hath said unto you. Ye shall henceforth return no more that way. Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply to himself silver and gold. And it shall be when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book out of that which is before the priest of the Levites. And it shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God, to keep all the words of his law, 
and these statues to do them. That his heart be not lifted up above his brethren and that he turn not aside from the commandment to the right hand or to the left to the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom. He and his children in the midst of Israel. Amen. Yeah, cut the TV off, cause this is the real world. Ride with us, ride with us. The real world, this is a man's world. This is the real world. This is a man's world. This is the real world. This is a man's world. This is the real world. This is a man's world. This is a real. Straight from the heart, it's a real world